and I used to watch the old man across the road do clock repairs. Um, there was an advert for a job, phone him up on the Friday, interview Sunday, and I did uh, seven years with him. My brother followed me in a couple of years later, and then uh, we opened our own shop, and we were collecting the clocks at the time, and there was a guy called Alan Warhurst, who was a curator of Manchester Museum, and he said, uh, you've got a museum here, lads. We have over 700 in the collection, and now we have some of the world's most important cuckoo clocks. It's very difficult, but we have some wonderful pieces. We class our collection as a jigsaw puzzle. Every time we get another clock, we put it into the collection and there's another piece missing. It's a never-ending story. Cuckoo Clocks was and is today primarily a cottage industry where you had so many different people making the clocks. They were never done by one person. There are many, many different styles from Art Nouveau, classical, Baroque, uh, carved cuckoo clocks and that's, that's, that's fantastic doing that. The guided tours last over, well over an hour. Um, I tell stories about all the clocks and where we got them from and the different styles and things that were made. As well as the tours around the museum, our main form of income is customers' repairs. We do work for people from all over the world and we treat everybody's clock as though it were our own, so they get the same standard of workmanship. We try to help all walks of life, everybody. I think that's very important. To some people, it's a, it, it, how can you talk and do a, make a living out of cuckoo clocks, antique ones? You make it a living if you're dedicated. Now, we, we eat, sleep and live cuckoo clocks, my brother and I. Um, it's a way of life that we chose and uh, it's a way of life we'll do until we've, we die. That's all I can say.